Alright, well we primed the oil pump. I did it off camera, didn't think about it. Basically what we do to prime it, um, and then this is not in the manual, this is my choice, I've done in the past, is uh, just pour the engine oil straight into the pickup tube through the screen until the pickup tube is full. Then I turn the crank and you can see the engine oil drop. I turn the crank for a little bit, pour some more oil in, turn the crank a little bit, pour some more oil in. And when I got done after I don't know, three or four times, I went in and filled it back up with the oil. And, uh, and from my experience in the past with the 4.7 liter, that'll generally get you a good prime. So we've primed the oil pump, filled the oil pickup tube. Now we're going to install the the uh, oil, oil pan, and uh, that's about as straightforward as you can get to. The uh, key there is hopefully your gasket's aligned, which is why we used uh, oil pan bolts during the uh, during the installation of the oil pickup tube, so that our hopefully everything would be aligned. I do have one bolt with a stud in it. Uh, it goes to a uh, I think it's the bracket that holds the transmission fluid lines or something of that sort. And I don't remember where it was except that it was up here toward the front. So I'll put it on the front. And uh, hope I'm right. If I'm not, when we do the install, I'll relocate it. it. Should be no big deal. Quite easy to get to on this motor. And uh, so we just run all these bolts in. These bolts are intended to go to 11 foot pounds of torque. And the torque pattern is basically starting to and work your way toward both ends. So I don't worry too much detail about which bolt which, but just in, in general, it works from the middle, both sides, toward the end. And uh, I'm going to buzz these down with my little uh, handgun there, and uh, then I'll come back and check torque on the uh, 11 foot pounds. My handgun will take us to there, so I'll be careful not to not to overdo it. And uh, there's a mess of bolts. Luckily there's an equal number of bolts, so we didn't lose any bolts this time. That's nice. Alright, so all the bolts are started. Grab my little hand in back here and just take them down. I'll go ahead and do the torque pattern so you can see it. So it's just inside to outside. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and use our torque wrench and take these little wonders to 11 foot pounds. It's such a light, light setting. Almost one of those you just do by hand, but on this particular gasket, a little more cautious. We don't want oil going everywhere. There's no RTV on this ceiling surface. Um, somehow this thing looked like it had been RTV before, which made it quite a chore to clean up the pan. 
But uh, again, I think there's been some significant work done on this block previously. So I'm not surprised that that was the case. So we didn't put any RTV over we installed it. Should be good seal as is. We've got a rubber gasket. In our case, it's all brand new. So it should hold well. And if it were to start seeping, we could just come back. We can torque these bolts just a little bit. And it should create a good seal. So there you go. The wall pan is installed. Now, before, well, as soon as I turn this block back upright, one of the things I'm going to do is pour oil in it. I just want to keep that oil pickup tube submerged as much as possible to maintain our prime. Uh, and then, when we put it in the car, one of the things that we'll do after we hook it up, and even before we install the uh, before we install the plugs, uh, I like to turn it over with the starter. And make sure that we build oil pressure. Uh, done that in the past and it seemed to work well. I'm just going around now, not worrying about the torque pattern, just making sure that everything's tight and we miss one like that. Easy with this many bolts in this one. And then while I have the block inverted, I'm going to go ahead and install the exhaust manifolds which gives us nice and convenient and real easy to get to right now and then we put it back up at engine oil we are ready to install this motor in the car all right oil pans on i'm happy all right well, we're going to install uh, exhaust manifolds um they're one side it's on one side, there's not too much of getting it wrong. Um, one thing you do have to, a couple things that really need to consider. When some of these bolts pass into water jackets, and so you need to be sure that you seal these bolts uh, when you put them in. Otherwise, you can have water leaks uh, coming off the side of the head around the exhaust uh, gas, around the exhaust manifold. The other one is, is that um, this exhaust manifold also has a heat shield. So if you look, there's six bolts here, and four of them must be studded in order to accommodate the heat shield. So what you can do is you can dry fit the heat shield, see where the studded bolts need to be, and then place your bolts correctly. So you do have two types of bolts. You have this type, which is, which is a studded bolt, and then you have some that are just standard bolts. And so be sure that you get the placement right, otherwise your heat shield will not go on correctly. Um, what I'm going to do here is go ahead and place, here's one of our gaskets. I'm going to go ahead and place that gasket here on the back side and uh, go ahead and get that installed. Um, let me turn this around right. There we go. And uh, I did check the fit on the gasket, and it's correct. So I can just place uh, one bolt at least and get that started. And then... We'll see about the other bolts. Uh, for now, I'm just going to dry, dry fit a couple of bolts to hold it, and then I'll worry about worry about the sealer in just a minute. Okay, so it's not going anywhere now. We got a little time to work. Make sure, obviously, the exhaust pipe connection is mounting toward uh, pointing toward the rear of the motor. And uh, so now we'll just take our sealer same using the same RTV that we've RTV seal we've used throughout this motor. Now if I look and make sure about my my heat uh, heat shield placement let me get this on here. There we go. So we know that the two that are in there are studded. We know that these two at opposite corners here are studded as well. So we'll install those and these two then will be uh, be a standard bolt. We're going to put a little bit of RTV on here. Doesn't have to, doesn't take a lot. You just want to be able to fill up any cracks and crevices. And then we'll make sure that 
the gasket alignment hole alignment is correct. Pick up on this thing a little bit. There you go. So be sure that that sealer goes on the part that goes in the block. Of course, fed it in, and you're good. So now if that one's in there, we'll take this one out and seal it. Now these things, these bolts will ultimately get uh, 18 foot pounds of torque, and then once they're torqued in place, then we'll put our heat shield on and put the heat shield secure, secure the heat shield with the four nuts and hold the heat shield on. So this is our last studded one on this on this side up here, and I like to just make sure I have to check the test fit on the on the uh, heat shield when we get done. Now I'm going to pull this one back out and go ahead and seal it. So just seal all these bolts. Make sure you don't have any water leaks out of this head, side of this head. Yeah, these heads were, I guess, whoever designed them, designed them pretty tight so that you ended up having to share water passages with bolts. Uh, I won't judge them. Yeah, I'll judge them. I think an engine designer, every engine designer should have to, to rebuild on every motor they design on the prototype just so we see the problems they create for people sometimes. There's our last bolt. That's the other hit. And we're going to run these down. And then we'll look at our alignment on our heat shield. Make sure that we're all good. These are 13 millimeter, using a 13 millimeter deep. Alright, so those are just run down on. They're not very tight yet, but they're on there. So we're going to check our heat shield placement. That looks right to me. Got four studs sticking up there. So now we're going to grab our torque wrench. We're going to take these to 18 foot pounds. And it's for the book. Right there. And the torque pattern should be from the inside out. on there. Okay. okay, well those are a little different size. Oh, I think I may have lied to you. I said they were 13s, actually. Looks like they might be 12, so you get a 12 shallow. And we'll check it out and see if it fits. There you go. That'll teach you to listen to me. So we're going to start from the inside out. Going to 18 foot pounds. Seems like a pretty low torque. But remember, these heads are aluminum. The similar metals can give you some different torques. Torques than you might be used to. So, we'll take them all to 18. This gasket will crush a little. So we'll certainly go back, reseat them at 18 again, like that. So on a valve, that'll, excuse me, on a gasket that'll crush, I'd certainly like to go around several times to make sure that it's proper. Never hurts to get it right the first time. shield next and this side will be done so heat shield goes on just as we showed four nuts don't worry about 
torque according to the manual. Does it give you a torque spec for them? Uh, these are number tens, I believe. And again, been wrong a whole lot of times before. If I can find my number ten shallow and we'll get these things on there. make sure that they're just right. Just right. Okay. Exhaust manifold is installed on the left side of the motor. Now we'll flip it around. We'll do the right side.